the bottle gon' fall, the speakers gon' crack, and everything is blap, everything is blap, everything is blap. Blap Yes. All right. Blap chats. So good. What's good, blap chatters? If you know what that feels like, a yawn, like a nice good yawn. It does. You know, it a nice stretch yawny. in the morning. It was a little yawny. <laughs> I'm going to name my kid Yanni. Yanni. That's a good name. That's a, that's a good millennial name. I actually know someone named Yanni. <laughs> Yanni is oh, cool. Yanni. Yeah. Yanni is cool. Yanni is better, though. Definitely. But then all the jokes that the kid would get like at school, like, oh, Yanni, did you fall asleep again? I've heard every single joke about your name you could hear in your whole life. <laughs> yeah. Because my name being Atlas. Of course. Ooh, like the world. Like the, can you shrug for me? Yeah, exactly. I bet you never get lost. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty good one, though. That, that one made me laugh. So Unbelievable. <laughs> um, guys, welcome to another episode uh, of Blap Chat. This is episode 107. This episode is super special. Mm -hmm. um, as you can see to my left, uh, we're here with a very, very special guest. First of all, shout out to... Um, Perfection and Glenn, yeah. uh, they couldn't make it today. Mm -hmm. um, you guys know if you follow the podcast, uh, Perfection is really, she's got making some moves. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me, she's making some moves. Um, she's on her production grind. So uh, I think she had a session today mm -hmm. and you know, Glam is on her artist shit. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, they couldn't make it, but uh, we're here today. This is Blap Chat, episode 107. I go by the name of Ill Mind. Mm -hmm. um, shout out to all you guys. Um, who have been listening to us. I'm here with my co-host. Yep, Atlas the Plug. What's good? Atlas the Plug, you already I'm know. Here. I'm here. You know I'm saying? I'm Atlas feeling is good. here. You feel me? And uh, we have another special guest here. I'm super excited to have him, obviously. Um, he's my blood, literally my blood. Um, so my brother is here, uh, and his name is Les, Les Paul. You know what I mean? I just got to say Les, Les Paul. Les Paul. Yeah. So clap it up for my my brother. Hey. Is here. Yes. Yo. Let's Yo, go. what's up, everybody? We family. Oh, yeah. we, we literally blood. Yeah, literally. Like, like literally. Like literally. Yeah. We have like the same on brother. the real. Yes. God, I have so Les is uh, Les is <laughs> Les is my older brother, and and I've always like throughout our whole life, like I've always looked up to Les with really everything. You know what I mean? And um, it's awesome for you to be here because um, I think we kind of like had a preliminary. Uh, uh, kind of teaser with yeah. some of the followers like you know you kind of pop up here and there you've been to a few of my past auxes sure in LA the live one I, I, the live the live podcast thing so some of you guys may or may not know about my brother Les um, you know he popped up on my IG by the time you watch this uh, or listen to this you probably would have seen the other day that he popped up on my IG live you know at the crib and stuff so um, I think it's really cool I really wanted to bring you in here um, and it's it's dope really dope for you to take the time to to be on the podcast I think of course um, for those who who don't know um, like kind of exactly what you do or whatever uh, well first of all let me go on record and say Les is um, an amazing musician on his own and he plays he literally plays instruments like a million times better than I do <laughs> like like you, like I I suck at piano he's actually like a real piano player first of all yeah. I wouldn't say that I mean like real pianists what like they they can read notes and everything but you know fuck as we that <laughs> fuck reading notes you know like no disrespect ear. to you guys who can but like you've always played by ear right right so I want to get into some of that stuff, sure. obviously, but the the short version is that um, I wanted to bring my my brother here today because not only is he a great musician, um, but also is a really really successful um, in the financial world. You know, you're an accountant um, for a really really amazing firm, and um, you've been doing that for years for a long time, um, and uh, I I know that you have a lot of really insightful ideas when it comes to finances. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously from your experience and from work and stuff and I think finances and I don't know if we touched on this Atlas on the podcast think, too much have, not really but finances is a really important. big really important subject to talk about when you're a producer or an artist rapper singer songwriter mm -hmm. and when you start to generate income things can get really confusing definitely and and it can get really overwhelming in terms of like what happens when I get paid? Mm -hmm. uh, when do I file my taxes? Mm -hmm. Or 
where should I put my money? Do I need to open an LLC? Like there's this whole like, oh, just start an LLC. But then people don't know the the basics and the ins and outs and the, the actual reasoning sure. behind that stuff. So why don't we kind of start and jump right in? I'm down to like yeah, jump right in, right into it. the like, financial stuff. It's yeah. like, you know, we talked a little bit about this earlier, mm-hmm. about how there's producers, especially producers, who are starting to like generate some income, sure. right? And you have producers that are uh, doing it on the side, making some residual income, maybe selling beats online, mm-hmm. $100 here, $50 here. And then you have more seasoned producers that may maybe are seeing royalties and publishing income, but also selling beats. Some are generating 10000 a year. Some are generating 10000 a month. Sure. Mm-hmm. So it's this huge range of people that are making money. So from your financial background, you know, we could just start here. Yeah. Um, what are some like basic financial literacy things mm-hmm. that you think would help for someone who is now just starting to make a little bit of money? Let's yeah. let's say I generated thirty thousand mm-hmm. dollars in beat selling last year. Mm-hmm. So what do I do with that money? Yeah, man. I mean, it can go in many different directions and it can also depend on your certain situation. So you said it really well because like the audience, it could be a a wide range, right? So literally step one is making sure you save about 10 to 20% of your money, which is at first you think it's just like, that's impossible, man. I got all these bills. Like, how am I going to do that? But that'll set you up so well in the long term, Mm -hmm. just keeping that this is financial literacy 101 like you should be saving 10 to 20 percent now now the question is where do you save that like it could be in a certain investment it could be just like stashing the bank and set it up as your emergency fund like a savings account yeah, or something. savings account checking account or whatever but like you should be take whatever income you're getting if you start on that basis that 10 to 20 percent definitely at first as a basis for everything that's a, a step in the right direction even more important though is reality sets in we got bills to pay we've got credit card Mm -hmm. debt and those have to be addressed before you can even start thinking about saving because in reality (coughs) even if you're saving one percent at least that's something because later on in time in three six months a year from then you'll you'll have something but you definitely have to address the debt first and that's kind of like a common theme a simple answer The, the the thing about financial literacy and like why people don't really talk about that much because literally only like 30 percent of like uh people in the united states understand what they should be doing with their money it's like the statistics are out there that's crazy like they Mm -hmm. purposely don't want to deal with it or want someone else to deal with it Mm -hmm. because today there's so many options there's Mm -hmm. like so many ways to make money or invest in your money that you've already earned so keeping the basics of saving and attacking your debt, attacking especially debt. especially credit card debt. Yeah, can we like, talk about that a little bit? So go. I think, and that's a mistake I know I made uh-huh. early on, and I'm sure all a of us. Of us. Have. Mm-hmm. Like you, you max your credit cards out, yeah. and then your credit is getting fucked up, and then you're so let's say you have credit card debt of like five thousand mm-hmm. dollars on like a Discover card, mm-hmm. and let's say at your job you're making a thousand a week, mm-hmm. right? A thousand dollars a week, you're saving. You're saved. Let's say you save twenty percent mm-hmm. of that thousand mm-hmm. dollars. That's after taxes. Mm-hmm. So two hundred dollars every week you put in your savings, mm-hmm. but you're not. You're paying the minimum amount on your credit card. <laughs> oh boy! And yeah. let's say the APR. What's a high APR? This is just like anything over fifteen, sixteen percent. Some of them go up to like twenty two right. percent. So if you have a five thousand dollar credit card debt at fifteen percent, and you're not paying it off but you're saving 10%, you're still losing money. You're still losing money because like- let's And your say credit score is going. Yeah. You're putting in a savings account that like at a bank that's probably only giving you 1% of interest, if that, like you, you are way better off in the long run to just take care, settle that debt down, eliminate that credit card debt, and you should be paying off your credit card bills monthly mm-hmm. to a zero balance because mm-hmm. The credit card companies want you to have a balance. They want you to only pay the minimum. They, mm. That's how they make their money, man. Yeah. But if you pay it off every single month, 
that's interest free. It's right. like you're borrowing money for free. Mm -hmm. So you, you use the credit card, but then make sure you pay it off back to zero every month. Back to zero, so man. Pay, and pay, like, pay back to zero. And, and this is something where it's not going to happen like right away. There is situations, and, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about the audience here too, because right. you know some of us maybe have two, three, four, five, ten, twenty thousand dollars worth of credit card that who knows, yeah. right? But like, that's such a key component in everything. Like, you wouldn't be investing your money on like a mutual fund or like in the stock market if you know that you've got this credit card that you got to take care of. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like the basics. And I was, I, and I'm a little bit surprised that a, a lot of people don't don't know that. Mm -hmm. and so. It, the information's out there, like a credit card, get it to a point, it might take you a year, it might take you two years, to a point where you're paying that off to zero every single month. Every month. Use it, you can right. use it, but use it and make sure that you pay it off. Yeah. That's basically about it. So make, being mindful of how much you know you're gonna make in a month and, and be responsible enough to say, you know what, if I'm making $5,000 in a month, on average, I'm not gonna spend more than that on credit card on my credit card because I have to pay use my off. cash to pay it off. Right. No, there, there's definitely listeners right now who are just saying like, "There's no way I'm paying that down." No, mm -hmm. it's impossible. My stream of income isn't what where I want it to be, or, or make it realistic to actually make that happen. Mm -hmm. But it's a, it's a process, right? It's like we all uh, been there. You know, it's like we we just want to be responsible take care of that first and in time you can start dabbling on like the other exciting things that you can invest in mm -hmm. right um but that's that, that credit card debt debt in general is like a main concern right it's you know you know, you know what else and I'm, I'm really really glad we're talking about this because i think something else that they don't talk about in the hip-hop community or just in the music sure. industry yeah. period is credit is your credit score and how important that is in mm -hmm. in life you know and it's like you know, when I when I was going to, um, I went to Kingsborough uh, Community College in Brooklyn, right? And my first semester there, I'd have any, I had no credit. So you know, like no credit's not bad credit. You just got to build it, right? Um, so literally, and they stopped doing this. I think they made it illegal. But literally, as soon as you got on campus, they'd be like these Mastercard, you know, sign, you know, with a Mets. Uh, yeah. You got a Mets T-shirt and a Mets hat. If you apply for this credit card, you know, I'm a Mets fan, right. so I apply for it. I get a little bullshit credit, like three hundred dollars or something sure. small yeah. to start off with, and like I went and I got it. I, I never. I, to me, I didn't even like know what I was like. Oh, free yeah. money! I went out and yeah. bought a pair of Jordans <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, and, and like really stupid, and then like. I fucked up my credit when I was young. So then as I got older, now I now it's much, much better. But for years, I just was scared to even look at my credit score. You know, because I just didn't yeah. want, I didn't want to know. It's like when you don't want to go to the doctor. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's like you don't want to know. And then um, I down, my best, my, my best friend Jay in Florida, I was venting to him. I was like, you know, I really, I just don't know where to start. Like, I don't know what to do. And he's like, bro, do this. He's like, download the app, Credit Karma. Right, he's like, download this app. It'll tell you your credit score for free, so you mm -hmm. at least know what your credit score is, mm -hmm. and then you can apply, you know, for one of the low credit cards where the uh, uh, limit's like three hundred, right. you know, um, just to build up some type of credit line, right? And then um, I paid it off each month, like just like you said, in full. Right. It was only three hundred bucks, whatever. Sure. But I did it every month religiously in full. Then after five months, your score goes up. Yep. And it's and, then, and I was excited and because you, you get the you get the app it tells you yo congratulations you're doing a good job your score went up, and I was like yo this is a lot of fun it's almost like a fun game true mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying and since I've been looking at it like that and I've been doing exactly what you said every month I do not care I pay my credit cards off in full mm -hmm. I just did it actually today mm -hmm. today's the the that's amazing the fifteenth yeah exactly 15th. it feels amazing to fifteenth I always do it on the fifteenth boom what a feeling. I feel so great because now I like I have don't know anyone a penny, but now I want to get into which is what you're saying is like now that I have that taken care of and my credit score is looking really nice and every, my balance is all everything is on zero. If I get you know, you know I'm expecting some money to come in. Let's sure. say five or ten racks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I put twenty percent in the bank. Mm -hmm. You know the rest are for bills. 
But like, where else? Because I know you said like this is where it can start getting real fun. So now, because you know you have bonds and like I don't know, I don't know what these yeah. different things are. Exactly. You yeah. Know? How do so you explain even, that? Yeah. How do you even? Be, where do you even begin to go yeah. to say okay? I have ten thousand mm-hmm. dollars here that I that I'm I'm in good shape and I want to put this somewhere. Yeah, yeah man. Do I go to Bank of America? Do I yeah. go online mm-hmm. and Google search? Like, who, who do I talk to? Yeah. So the the banks offer this. There's also Vanguard Fide- Fidelity. There, a, a, a nice, safe, easy way to do it is to take advantage of the uh, retirement accounts, like the IRAs, mm. um, like individual retirement accounts where you can stash and if we're getting like hands-on practical it's like you literally just go online and sign up have it connect to your existing checking account and make a deposit or make it a recurring monthly thing whatever you want to do and you can literally just set it up put put a hundred bucks in there or something or whatever but it's like before taxes like you don't you let it grow and that etf is basically looking at a lot of the index funds so the investments will mimic what happens on the in the Dow Jones and the S&P so you're not like picking the stocks you're not picking you're just picking how risk averse you want to be right so they make it see it's like there's so many options but if you just keep the simple basics of investing in an index fund or an ETF, I think it's exchange traded funds. I gotta double check that. But like Mm -hmm. that, those types of funds mimic what's happening on the Dow, the major, like the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the S&P, which is historically has been amazing. It's like been great. Like you're better off going that route for the long term and stashing your money there. And if it's linked or mapped to like a, like an IRA, like I was talking about, because uh, like in in like uh, the corporate world, it's like a four hundred one k that you're investing in. Right. There's also the IRAs where it's growing tax free. Mm. Right. Before taxes, tax free. Is that the same as a SEP IRA? It's it's uh. So the SEP one is more for the I think like self employed, so not yeah. someone who's like in the corporate yeah, world. That's what I have. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> so here's why I know what that is. So yeah. So same concept. That IRA is invested in whatever type of mutual funds. Like, um, it just depends on who it is you're working with. Right. And you pick how aggressive or not aggressive you want to be. Maybe you want to put make sure the fund has 80% stocks and 20% bonds because mm-hmm. you don't want to be super risky and it can change <clears> over <throat> time. It, it, it's a matter of how risk averse you want to be. How risk and the more aggressive be. you are, the more money you'll either make or lose. Yeah. But in the long run, you're going to make somewhere between 15, 20, 25, 30% on money that's compounding, yeah. which is a key. Like We were com- talking about that earlier. Compound that's interest. Compound the is wonder the, of the key. world. <laughs> yeah, it's they really call it the eighth wonder of the world, right? Yeah, I've heard that so why don't you explain what First that is? First of all, for let's do this for compound interest. Compound interest. And me and, me and Les had a great conversation at the studio earlier mm-hmm. about compound interest. He was like explaining it to me, and I and and it, it completely parallels a career in music. It re- and I'll, I'll I'll tie it together, but explain to the listeners mm. the super basic. Like as if you were, and not to offend the listeners, sorry guys, but as if you were explaining to like a child, like yeah. what exactly is compound interest? Yeah, I mean, there's some people who obviously know the term, but we'll talk to the listeners who, who don't really know yeah. with compound interest. Most of them interest. don't, yeah. Yeah, so you got a hundred bucks and you're making 2% on it, uh, let's say for five years. So, and, and again, this is like, most people don't don't know this stuff. It's like... In one year, you're gonna make $102, mm-hmm. right? At the end of year two, it's not you're not gonna make another only $2 if you're making 2% right. uh, you know, return. Right. It's 2% of the 102. 102. Wow, yeah. Not 2% Jeez. of the 100. Like, I, I'm like really so simplifying then ha- this. So when you- You're s- not gonna have 104 <coughs> after year two. You're gonna have more than that, whatever the calculation is. I don't have a right, right. In front of wow. me, but, yeah. And then multiply that, like go to five years, you're not gonna have compound only two percent. Compound. 
it's because if it was if it, going yeah, to grow. if it was two percent on a hundred you would make two dollars every year yeah correct non-compound yeah but that compound it's clutch because it, it's it's on top of it's it's like it keeps uh, and building. I, yeah it keeps building so we we're talking about earlier how the the financial graph sort of looks like this if it was two percent if it was two dollars every year it would be this right, right? straight because like you know exactly how much you're gonna make growth. i make extra two dollars every mm-hmm, year mm-hmm, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. compound is 102 and then 104 101, whatever yeah and so it's going like this yeah yeah, it makes total sense. It's bi- the the right the graph exactly. is sort of bending That's because amazing. the more you make, the more time that goes by. It's almost like you're doubling up every yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, it's what it feels like. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the key variable, and we talked about this too, is the time frame, right? Like, the earlier you start, like, and everybody should start today if they haven't started yet. It'll grow in time, like ten years down the road, twenty years down the road, and and I'm not one to always focus on the future. I'm more, I'm like kind of like a now person, but like you can put stash something and then just be pleasantly surprised five years later, ten years later. It's like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad I started that. Mm-hmm. Like whenever, you know. But that's going back to what Atlas was saying. That's after you took care of that the credit card. Credit yeah, card. yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. after the, the the shit that you you mm-hmm. still owe, on, and that's like you got to pay interest on it, or like a collection agency is attacking. Yeah. It's like you're not gonna dabble here yet. You can't. You got to take care of that too. A lot of people talk about how you should also have an emer- emergency fund that's uh, like you know liquid, like just in case those crazy things happen. You know, it's it, we're, we're we're in real life here, right? So. Yeah. If, if it's something medical or like your car breaks down you yeah. need to pay like, well, you can't breaks. work anymore for whatever you can't reason work, disability whatever like you gotta have that well it's ideal to have that extra stash just in case as an emergency fund right. so once that's all set up then you can really play you, you can play I mean? you can mm-hmm. make it like you said earlier when we were talking which uh, which I really loved it was making your money work for you mm-hmm. you don't wanna work for your money make the money work for you make man. the money like, work for you you can literally you. let it sit in a spot and it'll just grow man just don't look at it i mean mm-hmm. there's some successful day traders out there who are like really picking stocks but you, i've heard a saying where like you can have a monkey throw at a dartboard and select stocks and it'll perf- perform better than some of these professionals wow you know that's I mean? crazy like these professionals have a i think it's called like a fiduciary um responsibility to make sure that they're not the ones making out when they're giving the advice to their client it's like they got to look out for the client man but yeah, like mm-hmm. you know it goes back to what i was saying keep it simple there's there's so many 40 50 60 years ago there weren't as many options as there are today in right. terms of what to invest in what to invest in yeah to keep it keep it simple everybody google etfs google iras mm-hmm. who, you yeah. know fidelity is a good spot go to your local bank um just be careful because sometimes there some people are trying to make a quick buck there, but it's mm-hmm. not about that quick buck. It's about yeah. thinking about long term. Long what, term. What do you think about this whole Bitcoin thing? I I don't have any comments on it because mm-hmm. I don't want to speak on something that I have you don't no know idea yeah. Yeah. about. Okay. That makes yeah. sense. But I have people <coughs> in the finance industry who, you know, have approached me and and like said like you got to jump on this. You got to jump on this. Mm-hmm. And and when you monitor like kind of like the performance and read the articles, I mean. It looks like something that can really be big, mm-hmm. but there's just no way of knowing. Like, right. you can't really predict the future. Yeah. I mean, how realistic is it that we'll have some sort of um, like currency that's digital and that's going to be like the way of life? And that yeah. I'm not 100% sure that's how it's going to work. I don't even know what the impact would be with like what Facebook's trying to do. And I, mm-hmm. I think they have their own version of it, Libra or whatever it's called. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Bitcoin could be like a short-term great money grab, and mm-hmm. if you talk to the right people, maybe it's it's a route that you want to take and explore. Yeah. It if you got that play money, right? Play money is that you got what some it, play yeah. money? If you if, if you can burn it and not have to worry, then that then that's the money you would use yeah. to do any you know Bitcoin or any. I wouldn't put investment. I wouldn't put. I wouldn't make my portfolio just Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. it, it's an old saying like, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Yeah got to diversify diversification is another component to why 
like this ETF thing is, is a really smart thing because mm-hmm. you're kind of like investing in like multiple industries, multiple companies. It's like right. you're not just banking on, on one. one. Thing. Yeah. It's very right. cliche, but right. it's kind of like it, 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 it's applicable in the financial investment world. Right. One, you know, one thing I notice is one mistake that a lot of people make is um, when they start generating an, a pretty significant amount of income, like as a producer or an artist. Let's say you're a producer and you've got to the point where you're like you're making like five figures, some six figures a year Mm -hmm. on music and you make all this money. And then all of a sudden it's like, how do I pay my taxes? Mm. Or you you Mm -hmm. you don't really understand the concept of, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever money is coming in, whether it's an LLC or whatever, whatever money is coming in, you don't get to keep all of that money like that money is going mm-hmm. somewhere right and so what kind of advice would you have for and we'll keep it with music production sure. for the music producer who is like like quit their day job a couple years ago and <laughs> is successfully bringing in and i'm talking gross gross is sure. before expenses right yeah before. so they're grossing eighty thousand ninety thousand seventy thousand mm-hmm. a year mm-hmm. What's a what's a nice basic sort of like approach they should have with their finances? Yeah, so first of all, two guarantees in life, death and taxes. Yeah. You got to pay your taxes, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's kind of like a given. Mm-hmm. So a up and coming well, a producer music producer who made 80 grand this past year, you got to claim that. You got to say I made 80 grand and I didn't memorize the forms that you have to fill out, but you gotta go get have someone do your taxes. Get like a CPA certified professional. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't download the software and do try to do it myself. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. it's possible, but like, go to a professional and and you can even like shop around. But my my best recommendation is to get a referral. Mm. Get someone who who trusts someone doing their taxes in the industry. I mean, it's a given. It's a it, it's funny because referrals are where it's at. I mm-hmm. mean, if you yeah. know someone that is um being responsible taking care of their 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 taxes, you know, at the when it comes tax time by April or whatever, April 15, you got to you got to refer you got to get someone who has a referral for you like and it's got to be certified like a CPA professional. Mm-hmm. Don't half ass it. Like, mm-hmm. make sure that's legit, mm-hmm. and make sure. And and my recommendation is to, at first, if you're not trusting someone yet, have it, have a get a second opinion, get a right. second person to analyze. You know the income that you made and how much. You know whatever bracket level that you are and what percentage you should be owing mm-hmm. the government, the state, like, you know, paying for the state and the federal. Yeah. Remember, guys, state out. and federal. <laughs> yeah, and it's just too. and just and just do it. Just like ask someone to do it for you. You're not gonna do it yourself. No. Like I don't do my own taxes. I yeah. definitely have uh, a professional do it for for our family. And, yeah, and make sure that's legit. Yeah, yeah, you have to pay have your that. taxes, everybody. <laughs> That's facts. <laughs> yeah, you know I. This you know, is the stuff that people don't want to hear. Yeah, yeah, no, it's true. It's, like, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You want to say? Something? I was just gonna say that people are think that it's just gonna go away. Their money problems and their like financial situations, whether you know if it's towards the negative side, like they think it'll just go away mm-hmm. and magically. No. Disappear. It's not like it's not like getting a cut and then it'll heal itself. Yeah. No, it's it's like what Atlas was saying about the FI, the FICO scores, like mm-hmm. your credit score, right? Yeah. Like, that's legit records. You can go to Experian, or <coughs> whatever TransUnion. I forget mm-hmm. all of them. Mm-hmm. Equifax, mm-hmm. and they've got they've got your da- they got your credit history. They know how long your credit cards have been opened, how often that you pay it on time, mm-hmm. and it goes back to how you increase your credit score. Um, you know, in time, and a big factor is the balances that you have on mm-hmm. your credit cards, like your debt. So, like, um, so that's a big factor in the timeliness of your payments. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. it definitely ties in. But it, it's bottom line is like you just have to make sure that's legit with the FICO scores because 
um, it goes a long way when you're getting those loans down mm, in the long yeah. run or like um, I think some like job um, some uh, there's some opportunities like when people are interviewing like I think some companies look at your credit, credit score some of them do wow yeah some of them do wow them that's do. crazy also if you're 22 and you dropped out of college and you're selling beats and you live at home with mom and and you do it for three years and then you're 24 or 25 and you're making 50 60 70 grand a year and you're doing great on youtube and beat stars whatever but you neglected your credit and you're like i want to move out of mom's basement right now. no chance good luck applying for a fucking apartment mm -hmm. because <clears throat> if you don't have a guarant guarantor right and you try to get that apartment mm -hmm. You better look at your score because yeah. if you're in bad shape, a you're, lot not, of a lot you're not of, moving out of mom's basement. A lot of places won't even look at you if your score is not like at least 650 mm -hmm. or right. something like that. Right. You know, what's interesting, too, is, um, you know, when I first started doing events and stuff like that, I never thought about taxes ever. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, and then you think about it. It's like, OK, well, when I set up an event, I'm setting up an event, right? Or I'm setting up a ticket leaf or I'm from the website. Um, I'm setting up a bank account, right? That's linked to one of these. Uh, people are RSVPing or, or buying slots, or whatever they're doing. So money is getting transferred, you know, monthly or biweekly or whatever um, from the events to my account. And then at the end of the, you know, so the money gets in there. As much as I think I want to keep all that money, yeah. I have to put some of it aside for taxes. Right? Yeah. Because at the end of the year, <clears throat> just like you said, they can literally, they can just look and it's all there. Yeah. If someone wants to sit and look at it, they can see literally, okay, well, from uh, the events, he's made this much, so he owes mm -hmm. us, you know, five grand or whatever it is, 600, mm -hmm. whatever it is. And uh, I just started really kind of, you know, because I've been doing a lot more events and sure. a lot more of this. And then, re you know, I started more recently focusing on, like, all right, dude, like, you got to start yeah. making sure that your tax situation at the end of the year is good. Right. You know, and, and it's fine. It's been it's been fine because I've been on top of it. But yeah, you know, it, it's I, easy to slip up and get caught up. Easy because yeah. you think no one sees it. Yeah, but it's yeah, all it's I all mean, electronic. Everyone, you know, it's traceable. That's why. That's why in some cases people like, you know, the term like uh, handling things under the table or like ca right. cash only. Mm -hmm. like, so there is no record. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. So, absolutely. Like I'm not promoting any foul play out there. Yeah. But like, right. you know, like, like those little little uh, <laughs> uh, you know when you go to like the the dry cleaner. They're like, oh, cash only. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. What I'm oh. Oh, okay, I know what this is. You know who else does that? <laughs> okay. Whenever you go to buy jewelry. Cash only, okay. There it is. Whenever you go buy jewelry, they, they're like, yo, listen, if you, uh, if you pay cash, I'll, I'll take 15% off. <laughs> yeah. Or I'm like, like you know, bro, why are you doing this you to me, bro? You know what I'm vintage stores with yo. the records and the little, right. the little Nintendo and the mm -hmm. little Star Wars figurines? Mm -hmm. Like, cash only sorry mm -hmm. right. they don't want to claim that much profit or income yeah. when it comes tax times like i only made a hundred grand you i know, didn't make 150 you know what other industry is notorious for that mm. restaurant yeah of course yeah when i waited wait, tables wait. yeah or bartended cash. i never bartended so, but the bar it's, it's all everyone knows this in the restaurant business <clears throat> if you wait tables you're a busser uh bartender at the end of the night if you claim any cash because a lot, a lot of it got to the point where we were literally just putting credit card down. Yeah. Um, you would claim very, very little of yeah, it for little. any of it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Not that I ever did that for the record, of course. Right? But just, that's a norm. You did the right thing. You know, I paid my yeah, taxes. Always. I'm a good American. Yeah, that's a, that's a norm for a lot of people. Yeah. Going back to the compound interest thing. So when we were talking about that earlier, I, we were kind of talking a little bit about like my career, and oh. just just not even mine, but like a, the career of the successful music producer or a right. music creator that has mm -hmm. seen success right mm -hmm. and when you look at the trajectory of someone who has been become successful in music it's a compound interest type of graph because it's like mm -hmm. and I was telling my brother earlier it was like for me in the early days you know 15 years ago when I first started this or even more it was like broke not making money, mm -hmm. not don't know anyone, and, it, and the graph was this. It was like bottom of the barrel. Yo, everybody, everybody heard this story. <clears throat> bottom of the barrel, right? So this is this side is like success, and right. then this is time, right. right? Right. So in the beginning, it's like bottom of the barrel, bottom of the scraping barrel, scraping the bottom, scraping, scraping, scraping. mom's basement, and then mom's basement, and then it's yeah, our mom, right? That's right. 
It's basement Power basement. Mom. And then, <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Someone bought a beat for $10. Mm. Cool. Okay, now I'm wiggling a little bit. Wiggling. Still at the bottom. Yeah. Still at the bottom. And then all of a sudden, it grows a little bit. So it's growing over time, growing, mm-hmm. growing, growing. Now all of a sudden, things are starting to happen. Oh, I got my first major placement. Oh, I, I'm like signing an admin deal. Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. Whoa. Oh, I worked with J. Cole. Oh, mm-hmm. I worked with Kanye. Oh, so now the graph is mm-hmm. moving in this way. It's compounding. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it was like 2011 mm-hmm. was cool. 2012 seemed to be twice as good. Mm-hmm. 2013 was twice as good as 2012. Right. 14 was when I worked with J. Cole. Mm-hmm. And then got my first Grammy nomination. Mm-hmm. 2015 was Drake for the first time, another Grammy nomination, mm-hmm. and then Khalid, another one, and then 17, 18. So it's for me at least, my graph looks the same. It was this, and then like it's compounding. Mm-hmm. Now being in 2019, my graph is looking like this. Mm-hmm. So I know what 20 and and 19 has been great. I know what 20 look 2020 looks mm-hmm. like. It's it's going to compound even more. Facts. And it's really just going to skyrocket. Mm-hmm. And so we were saying earlier was the one thing that people neglect uh, and the reason why they don't reach that compound interest Mm -hmm. tilt is time. That's it, man. I mean... Time. Mm -hmm. That that, that part of the graph... That that X, Y access, right? That X, Y access, that time variable is what people neglect because they quit too early. Yep. 100%. 100%. I mean, if you had an <clears throat> IPO, like if you had a stock in 2014 that I could buy, I would have bought it at, you know, at 2014. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. Right. You know what I mean? <clears throat> like exponentially mm-hmm. the growth to tie it into like your music career. Right. 100%. That graph looks like this, yeah, man. And it's, it's just compound. going on the way up, man. Yeah. And that's Yeah, like people think it's like this, right? Mm-hmm. Which it is to a certain extent. But you gotta zoom out. You mean like mu- You mean like, like music my or- career? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, there's ups been, and downs. But it's been. It know. moves like this when you zoom in. Definitely. It's this, right? Exactly. But when you zoom out, it's it's, it's this. It's this. It's a very sharp mm-hmm. curve. And I think the key, like you said, you you notice it with people mm-hmm. that that hard curve line, yep. like uh, Lil Nas X, mm-hmm. Old Town Road. Boom. 19 weeks at number one. Shout to my man Keo, by the way, mm-hmm. who produced it. Mm-hmm. Compound, compound interest. Those graphs just fucking turned. It was like a sharp curve. Hell yeah. You know? That um, story is crazy. Yeah. So, man, that compound shit is like the truth. Yeah, everybody going to Google <laughs> compound interest and how, <laughs> how it's like it's the eighth wonder of the world, man. I'm telling it's you. It's crazy. It's crazy. Next album out. Compound interest, baby. Hot 97. Let's go. (laughs) Top five. Angie Martinez. Thanks. Um, And, but in the early days, like obviously, so guys, obviously, you know, Les is my brother. He, so in the early days, obviously we talk on this podcast and when I talk to people, they know a little bit about like my start. Yeah. But when I say like, um, mom's basement, yeah. It was really like the room upstairs. Yeah. So it's not like it wasn't we're gonna, literally we're gonna the basement. We're going to fact check yeah. everything that my brother yeah. has mm-hmm. said in so, the last five, six, seven years. So <laughs> um, 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 so we talk about being living at, at home with mom. Yeah. You moved out way before I did. Mm-hmm. I was living with mom for at least six years mm-hmm. after you moved out. Mm-hmm. And so. I tell people like yeah I was like living with mom making beats all day so like what are some memories that you had with us like when you would come to the house and like it'd be like oh he's like junior that's what they call me so like junior is like in this room right on the keyboard yeah like so literally like confirm with the listeners and the watchers like what exactly was I doing in those ground grind years and it was a grind (laughs) it was a real grind it wasn't in the basement it was in the bedroom yeah with that big thick monitor yep and logging into dial up yep going on the undergroundhiphop.com ugh yep. Shout out to ugh yep posting your beats there mhm you got your cord triton to the right 
right. The Korg Tritone. And then, uh, <laughs> that was such a classic machine. And you bought that used, like, on Craigslist used. or something like yep. that. Mm-hmm. Everything was used, man. Everything mm-hmm. was, like, scrap. Mm-hmm. You, you, get, you had vinyl. Guitar Center, yeah. Tons of vinyl, right? And it was literally. From Dad. Some yeah, from Dad. Yeah, Dad had mm-hmm. a, bun- a bunch of yeah. vinyl. Yep. And, you know, your turntable, and you, you just set it up. You, were you using Cubase back then? I was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was Cubase. All right, let's talk about that. Mm-hmm. How his initial, like, taking a step back, let's go back five, ten years from that point in time. Man, I don't know if anybody remembers, but there was this game on Nintendo called Mario Paint. Mm-hmm. And you can, like, draw stuff up. It's, like, pretty simple game. Mm-hmm. But there was also a component to that that was like a music component where you can create music in the video game. Yep. Like the mushroom was the kick, and I think the the star was like a a snare or a, a hi hat, whatever hat, it was. Yeah. And you literally started there. Program beats, yeah. On, then, on Nintendo, super. Because my brother was a big uh, video game player. Yeah, back just then. a little bit, just a little bit, a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it turned into you know the PlayStation days when PlayStation MTV Music out. Generator. MTV Music Generator. Mm-hmm. You made some fire on that, mm-hmm. you know? And this was even before using the, the piano yep. or anything like that. Mm-hmm. You're using that. Mm-hmm. And it, and what was funny about that was that, and, and it, it goes back to some discussions. Did I lose my audio? No, no. here. You can I hear yourself? My, my, oh. Your headphones. Oh, that's good. Yeah. It goes back to, like, kind of like how producers used to not want to reveal what they're actually using. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So you kept That's that a was. little hidden for a minute. I kept it low. I kept it low because I was like, people aren't going to take me seriously if they know I'm making beats on I mean, PlayStation. Right, right. Let's right. keep it a buck. You know? So back then, it was like super frowned upon. Yeah. So so you're living with mom, right? And yeah, you were grinding. You didn't- Where did I go come- every week? Philly. You were going out in the Philly, which is great. I'm glad you brought that up because mm-hmm. it goes back to, man, this is- a while back where we were doing you were doing the Beat Society Beat Society Mm -hmm. so that's one memory that I have and I think it's out in uh, on YouTube still that post where it was the event with 88 Keys Mm -hmm. and and then Kanye came out oh yeah it is on YouTube that's on YouTube it's it's still there that video I think I took it on that big ass Sony you took that video it was me Les took it and it was I was like all the way in the back too I remember seeing that on YouTube yeah that was me zooming in on 88 Kanye was like go little mind yeah yeah it's like my voice saying, go, oh, my. That was like a cool yeah. moment when you were on the train. Boom, boom, boom. Crazy. Boom, boom. Yeah. Boom, boom, that was a boom, turning boom, point. Wow. Boom. You just played that. Yeah. And it was funny because, like, you already had it playing and you were, like, touching some stuff. But yeah. The crowd was going crazy. Yeah. And that was a cool moment. That was in Philly. Yeah. So you would go to Philly a lot to collaborate and do, do music. And and it was literally pe- meeting people on, it was UGHH, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and that was basically what it was grinding you you didn't come come out that much no. like people were like i wasn't hey. really hanging out you weren't hanging out nope. you weren't you weren't wasting your time at parties or at clubs because back in the day we would go clubbing yeah we, we went a few times i went a few times you came out a few <laughs> times i'm not gonna say i'm saying strip club i'm not gonna say got in trouble a couple times you know what i'm saying a few times here and there here and there <laughs> but yeah man like you're you're speaking the truth like you were literally grind, grinding yeah. on the music scene and you and that's what it takes and you did that for years yeah like to a point where I was just like okay he loves what he's doing and this is a key component to mm-hmm. all of this like I supported all of that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know our family supported it like mm-hmm. mom and dad did so it wasn't like you weren't getting the pressure and and I'm glad this is coming up because like I asked some of my followers on, on my Instagram like what, what we should talk about on mm-hmm. this podcast and a lot a lot was talking about family history yeah. and what the household was like because not everyone has the luxury of having yep. a support cast you know mm-hmm. of family saying yes pursue that yeah especially in like an Asian com- community where mm-hmm. you get a lot of pressure to Mm-hmm. be a doctor or a yeah. lawyer or an engineer mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. like i think it's because dad was in the music industry yeah that so helped that helped and th- I, I love that video clip man yeah that of your dad. dad yeah 
I never saw that. I literally almost cried. Like yeah. it was like a video clip of your dad, and you were like like young, ill mind, yeah. right? And he and he was saying like, yeah, I came home one day, and and he chopped up one of my records, and he made a beat, and basically not verbatim, but he was like, and I loved it. I couldn't yeah. even believe he did. I was yeah. so proud of him, and I was like. That's fucking amazing. Yeah, like, like you were like a kid, and must must have because your dad, I'm sure, had hundreds yeah. of, of vinyl. He did. You must have felt like a kid in a fucking candy store, mm -hmm. just like going through them and looking at the cover and picking them out and putting yeah. them on, you know. And yeah. you seeing that whole thing, I, mm -hmm. I can't even imagine what it was like. Yeah, and and you're absolutely right. Like the cards that were dealt to us allowed for us to have the luxury for certain things mm -hmm. like especially me 100%. like like dad having a vinyl collection and and being a musician like be playing guitar my mom not really understanding but her being down to like financially mm -hmm. support and like Definitely. not kick me out mm -hmm. because i dropped out of college mm -hmm. or school sure. and like said hey mom and dad i want to just want to like play with my keyboard all day mm -hmm. like that's hard for a parent you know what i mean to just be down for so yeah like i had those cards dealt to me and they helped so yeah continue what you're saying about like support and stuff like yeah because sure. because there's some people in the audience that don't get that support right, right absolutely like mm -hmm. on the real mm -hmm. and it makes it harder for them and i'm not one to comment and say you know suck it up or anything like mm -hmm. that like that wasn't our life our life was like support we were surrounded by music every day, even going back to the early days when we oh, used to we go. Oh, we were kids. And you probably brought this up earlier in your previous discussions where we would go to the Bronx every weekend. Yep, and, that was a real thing. And our relatives, literally our aunts and uncles, mostly our uncles and my dad, they would just jam out mm -hmm. live music. My dad on the guitar, uh, you know, and all my uncles. Yeah, like uh, Tito George on the fucking Tito bass. George was or, on the mm -hmm. drum, no. Drums, probably. Well, Tito Gani played the drums too. Yeah, they all dabbled. Yeah. Uh, in everything. Yeah, They're very talented. But what kind of music were they playing? playing? Rock stuff. Rock music. Rock. Soul. Rock. Beatles. Like funky, Michael Beatles, Jackson. Okay. okay. Sting. Okay. Pop. All rock. That shit. Everything. Okay. Little bit of everything, um, and that's all we heard. Yeah. We always listened to music, and then when my dad was doing the entertainment uh, as part of the Fame Band. Uh, we would tag along and we would help out Rody, right? And mm -hmm. it was basically we get free food too. We got invited to this wedding. This is yeah, pretty nice. Like my but dad we would, do, would do like table. a wedding gig with his band and he would bring me in less. Oh. And we he would he would be like, I'll pay you guys twenty bucks if you help us bring the speakers in and, and you're help like, us. Hell like, yeah. You're like, Hell yeah, Dad, we're gonna best. help you. Yeah. And then free food Free food and wedding food is the best. People are dancing and we're backstage. We like we're like superstars, like, oh our dad's That's like playing a band and shit. That's cool. That was our childhood. Yeah, so I mean cool. it's like if you're surrounded in that environment mm -hmm. Uh, of course it leads into something that's like music related yeah. or in the mm -hmm. creative world and zero pressure to be something that you're not like mm -hmm. they let us be who we are yeah. and to and and straight up like i think our parents had it kind of easy because they didn't really have to force us to do anything yeah we just pursued what we wanted to do Mm -hmm. Yep, and we got the support from them, and yeah. I'm taking that, you know, as a father of two boys, mm -hmm. like I'm trying to learn from that, and really give support to my boys in whatever they want to pursue, mm -hmm. because I got to learn that they're not like me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's hard. Yeah, and part of me thinks that way, and also part of me thinks about the discipline component that I think is still somewhat yeah. important as well because that's what shaped us because you know you know our parents were so much they were strict in, you know in terms yeah. of like you can't be out late yeah like when i talk about how like they let us do anything they didn't let us out late like forever yeah you know, we like, can't be out and then like not come home <laughs> right of course not <laughs> like shit like that you know what i mean but that takes time to build that trust right so mm -hmm. they ended up trusting us and also was, too and you know this is also this is kind of going into like nature versus nurture mm-hmm right nurture is like a huge thing like i personally believe in nurture mm -hmm. i believe in like you are a product of like the people around you right and i think True. for us too like we had some really good friends mm -hmm. i think i think that having helped. good people around and just good friends and people like a good support system 
like went a long way. It just goes. Long yeah, way. man. Like shout out to the early years growing up in Bloomfield, New Jersey. They already know. You, you already know, know Bloomfield, the hood. Punch you know what Bill. Mean? You know what I mean, Bloomfield. Mm-hmm. Putting it on the map. You know, growing up in those early childhood yeah. days, we had a great support system from a friend perspective too. Yeah. I mean, it's it's just proof that the more you surround yourself with people. Um, the better it is because you can go into like this turn where you feel alone. Yeah. And in any situation, that's it's not good. It's not where you want to be. That's you want to involve as many people as possible. You get to pick and choose who you want to hang out right. with. Right. Mm-hmm. Pick the right people for mm-hmm. you that were in your same same level, same mm-hmm. wavelength, or whatever. It's just like good to have that great support system. And that's all we know, right? Like yeah. we can only talk about what we grew up with we grew up with great support with family and friends mm-hmm. and that's a key component into uh how it's shaped the both of us yeah and you know now with the internet mm-hmm. i mean you know you could there's so many benefits to it now like you could meet people mm-hmm. i mean there's so many stories right even bregma Mm-hmm. Bregma, when we had yeah. Bregma on the podcast Producers, a couple episodes ago. Homicide, I told you about M- them. M- they produced the Eminem Logic thing. Right, right. That was their first major placement, and they met on the internet. Mm-hmm. Instagram DM. Oh, you make beat right? Was it Instagram DM or um, what was it? They actually um, they went to college together, I believe. Right. Went to college, and right. then they were all working overnight shifts as security guards in like different right. malls or, or venues, um, working the overnight shift, listening to Blap Chat. Um, we're all roommates, and then when they would come home, you know, overnight, you're getting home, you know, six in the morning, seven in the morning. They would come home and discuss like what they learned from the Blab Chat episode, and then they would execute it. So they would go out and like, okay, well, Blab Chat's always talking about finding local artists. Okay, well, let's start building art. Let's start finding art, and they did. Yeah. Wow. They found a dope Crazy. local guy that now that's signed to them, you know. Um, and then they started just using everything about going out and networking and all the stuff we talk about in the, in the hundred and whatever episodes, right. and. Boom! First placement, Eminem and fucking Logic, homicide, yeah, life changing, and but I think the key with them was that, like you said, they they had a common interest together mm-hmm. and they built a community, yeah, together, a group. Yo, that's so important. And and so important. And I mean, it's like a shameless plug here, like past the ox, mm-hmm. past the ox. Everybody gotta get no, on that. Myself an air horn. I've been to a, I've been to a couple. Yeah, mm-hmm. past the oxes were really are just, the one in L.A. was dope. Oh, L.A. is always to. such a good time. Shout out to all the yeah. producers. Shout out to all, all of you guys who have come to my past the ox events. Um, if you're listening to this podcast and you're new, um, you might not know about past the ox. But basically, long story short, it, I, it's basically this event I do every month where I get upcoming producers and artists together in a room and we hang out in a studio. You plug the ox in, you press play. We talk about your situation, answering questions. We're vibing with each other, networking with each other, getting to know each other, really getting to know each other. And then um, afterwards, there's a we sign up for this chat. I have this like huge chat room with every single person who's come to my Pass the Ox event. It's been life changing. It's been life changing. And then also mm-hmm. too community thing, this um, Ill Mind Platinum Club that I literally just reminded you guys about on my Instagram not too long ago. But just stuff like that, like creating community, I think is probably the biggest component to all so. of this stuff. Right? Being part of something, right? We were talking about that. like Definitely. I mean, and it's applicable in a lot of industries. Yeah. I mean, when, if I flip it to like the corporate world, I mean, you got you to gotta be with your peers. You got to get aligned and... All the cliche stuff where it's like, sure. get that meeting, get a line, let's make sure we're all headed in the right direction. Let's work as a team to mm-hmm. make it work, whatever mm-hmm. you're executing or delivering. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's true merrier. even, even in, in your company too. Like you work for one of the biggest uh, firms, mm-hmm. accounting firms in the world, mm-hmm. and you're a senior executive there. Mm-hmm. And so there's people that work for you. There's people that you work with. Mm-hmm. And so do you, what kind of similarities do you see in your world um, similar to like the music industry, like in terms of like um, adding value, sure. being um, if I'm a new employee, how do yeah. I prove myself? Like yeah. being a team player, being a leader, like what are some things you... That's, it, that's so parallel, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, when you're starting out day one, I mean, 
you've got to prove yourself, right? That you can add value to someone. Mm -hmm. So you literally have to say yes to everything when you're starting See? out. When you're starting out. You say out, that every episode. We talk about it all the time. And 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 it's it's very applicable. Mm -hmm. And you work your way up, right? I mean, you get early on I was I was kinda like focused on trying to impress, which I if I had to go back, like I would stay more true to myself and try to meet as many people as possible early on. Because at first I was just like saying yes to my boss and yes to my peers to just kind of like prove myself right. and get. You know, so get you the were ball saying rolling. yes, saying yes to all everything. the time early, all the time early, and that helped me out mm -hmm. because I was saying yes. I was learning a lot of things mm -hmm. because when you say yes to something, you have that, to go do it. <laughs> you say yes to something that you kind of don't know what you're doing. You kind of like wing it, but you learn about it. And you, you, you early go. on in your in your twenties. I mean, you should be saying hell yes to everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you choose no, I mean, there's trade-off, right? Mm -hmm. Like, if you're saying no to something, that means you're saying yes to something else, right? Right. I mean, yeah. you gotta say yes <coughs> to a lot of things, mm -hmm. learn from it, go from there. So from a cor corporate perspective, I mean, you know, it takes a while to get promoted, it takes a while, a while to make yourself known, but bottom line is, in that world, like, what's worked for me is that I keep things professional. I make sure I collect all the facts before <clears throat> I make a decision. Um, maybe a little bit to a fault, I end up trying to get buy-in <coughs> from a lot of people and getting a consensus to, in, in order to move forward. And sometimes yeah. you just have to say, let's just do this. Make the right. executive decision and just Make the executive decision. It, yeah. yeah, because sometimes, sometimes you wanna ask for, you don't wanna ask for permission, you just wanna ask for forgiveness. Mm. So just do it, just do it. Yeah. If you feel like it's right, mm -hmm. um, and I sleep well at night because I know I'm doing the right thing, right? Because some people can do some shady things, or like mm -hmm. ego gets in the way, or ego something like that, way. and like I don't know, and they worry and stress and stuff, right? But like you know, as you grow older, you, just you learn that up stuff, learning things like that. How important is it in your industry <laughs> to be liked, like the the button pusher, the boss man? likes you enough as a just trust you enough likes you enough and is it important to build that trust i think what's more important is to be respected mm -hmm. because you end up building trust that way mm. sure sure everybody wants to be liked right I, i'm sure um in that world but if you're liked but not respected then what's like the point like That's, why are mm -hmm. you there like right. you're just there for the likes yeah <laughs> like, yeah like you want to make sure you're adding value you want to make sure people can come to you and be like you're the trusted advisor for mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. and in my opinion if you start losing that feeling then you shouldn't be there mm -hmm. yeah like if you feel like you're not adding value mm -hmm. um Gotta get out of there and yeah. mm -hmm. do something else because yeah. that's not for you. Yeah. So, the like thing, somebody might answer in a different way. Like, no, I gotta be liked because the, these boss, my boss needs to like me, and then yeah. you never know what happens. But like, I found out that if you're respected, if you can prove that you're like um, that, you can work with other people, but at the same time, believe in yourself that an answer is the right answer with conviction and with confidence. Mm -hmm. I think that goes a longer way than just being like facts. Facts. I, I, it's, it's interesting listening to you um, speak about this because it definitely goes hand in hand with, you know, with the music and, and, oh. and networking and, you know, even like here when you talk, you know, cause you know, like I do my little Twitter gems and I put them on Instagram and stuff. And it's like everything you're saying, it's like, I could not freaking agree. The respect yeah. thing you're talking about. Yeah. It's so true. It's like, okay, I can like you, but if I respect you, yeah. then I'm not now I'm looking at you in a whole different light. Different light. It's like, yeah, I could like yeah, yeah, Joey, yeah, Joey's cool, Joey's cool, but man, I respect Tommy. Yeah. yeah or yeah. I respect Mike, dude. I just respect them. It's like when you put someone on a respect level, it's like 
you not only do you like them, but you almost like look up to them in a, in a way yeah. or admire what they're doing. I want to yeah. learn from them, which is awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. And it's awesome to be the, the giver, but be on the receiving end of that, too. Yeah. It's like a win-win, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Speaking of win-win, which hopefully is the case. Uh-oh. You know what time win, it is, Win, win, right? win, win. Yes. You know what time it is, I'm right? Fuck everything this. else. Here we go. Yeah, win, I- win, 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 win. It is time for... Blap chat. Hey, blap chat. It is time for blap chat. Oh, blap or crap. <laughs> Sorry, blap or Yo. crap. Yo, I can participate in this. Of, of course, course bro. Hell yes. Are you fucking kidding me. Absolutely. I am so amped for this moment <gasps> right here. Me? This is the moment of truth. <laughs> we haven't had a blap in a long time. In a while. I'm not even gonna fucking front. In a while. So check it out, guys. This is what we're gonna do right now. So just to confirm, I can only say blap or crap. Yeah, and then, and, then, and then you could no, and then you could articulate. Like, yeah, why Let's you can go. you can get Let's into go. it. Let's go. Yeah. Um. So check it out, guys. We're doing this segment. This is a part of the podcast called Blapper Crap. Um. And first of all, shout to all of our listeners, mm-hmm. all of our subscribers. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're listening on iTunes or SoundCloud, hit that subscribe button, that follow button, that repost button. Mm-hmm. Really, really appreciate all of you guys. This is the segment called Blapper Crap. So we're going to listen to a snippet and we're going to randomly choose your beat submission that you submitted to us. We're going to listen to a snippet. And if we like the beat, we're going to give you a blap. And if we don't, we're going to give you a crap. And we're going to try to give you a little bit of constructive criticism. But we're not here for that. We're here for the fucking shits. All right? So <laughs> Speaking my language, yo, I like here this. Here we go. So if you want to submit to this segment... All you have to do is send an MP3 attachment with subject line blap or crap to info at blapchat.com. Our first submission, I'll give this guy his fucking due because he sent like a million. Our first submission is J Note. Here we go, J Note. Let's go. The pre- kick this off, J Note. Come on. You gotta put something on that master. It's a little mm-hmm. low. Can we get a little volume on the aux in there? Thank you, guys. Mm-hmm. It's just like super muddy. Too. Yeah. It's like done a million times. Yeah. Super safe. Started off. Uh, I'm gonna crap it. I don't know. It's just like it wasn't terrible, mm-hmm. but I just it was. I just, I've heard it so many times. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it just wasn't wasn't good. Was good. Yeah, as as someone who doesn't listen to a thousand beats like you do per day mm. from submissions or whatever, I'm gonna say that was. A blap only because it's, but it's not like a a ten out of ten blap. It's right. more like a seven out of. I don't want to use seven. So it was out, decent. It was half. a decent blap. It was okay, okay only we'll because of a, a, only because of one thing. It to me, and I'm trying to put myself in his position. Like he didn't get. He wasn't super lazy with it. At least he had some change ups. Yeah, true. that made you think every four to eight bars like. Okay, maybe it'll change. Oh, nice little throw in there and there. Yeah. So he was somewhat creative with it, um, but I understand the other side of it where it is kind of like lazy, typical right. trap, heard it before type deal. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not going to 100% crap it. I'm going to say it's a 
of six and a half Cut out of between. ten black. There you go. There you go. At? I'm going to crap it. All right, crap it. I'm going to crap it. Uh, the mix really needed it. It was almost difficult mm-hmm. to listen to, even though I can, I got through it. It wasn't the worst beat I've heard. Uh, I mean, I agree yeah. less with that. Like, there were some things in there I was like, oh, okay. I thought, the, actually, <clears throat> I thought the programming was really good. Mm-hmm. I liked and the arrangement of the drums. I wasn't crazy about those like chord progressions. It's like it was very typical. Mm-hmm. I wanted to hear just something more unique. Again, not a terrible beat. I mean, there's rappers that'll jump on there and probably make a really cool song. Um, but I have to love it to blap it. Mm-hmm. So I'm yeah. gonna crap this one. All right, there you go. Our next submission is by Grandma Moses. Shout out to Grandma Moses. Here wow. we go. Let's go. All right, it's going to go either way. I feel like I'm shopping at Kmart. Please come hard. Yeah, yeah please. Okay. 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 Leaving some room. Yeah. There's a lot of space on it. Verse. It's the verse. Nice and open. Just need some good verses. Yeah. It's got a good moment, good movement, too. Yeah. can turn into a cool song oh yeah add some texture mm-hmm. here something here this part's cool too I like this alright not bad man I like it not bad <laughs> I'm gonna blap it I'm blapping it too I like it you know what I really liked it <laughs> um, I like the arrangement of that a lot. Yeah, I liked when it was like the space in it. Like we knew <clears throat> what the verse was. I felt like I knew where the chorus was. Mm-hmm. I liked when he kind of just took all the percussions out and just kind of left the sample in there. Um, I really like on the uh, the uh, on the up. Mm-hmm. There was like the ah uh, that kind of came up. That was really <clears throat> dope. I'm gonna blap that. That was fire. I liked it a lot. Amazing. So Less? so this is my response here. So. It's a little bit of a cop out, but like it kind of depends on what the artist does on it. Well, yeah, like the goal, because you know, I, I take it back to like the Beat Society, right? Mm-hmm. You want to bring fr- fire and yeah. screw the room for any artist. It's not no, gonna be a song. I'm gonna display my talent. Yeah. Right. Yeah. In that scenario, that would not work in that environment. No. Right. It's not a beat battle. Track. This is not a beat right. battle track. It's but a it's a. Track. This could be a good song. Song track. radio ready track. So yeah. because of that. Yeah. I'm going to blap it because yeah. there's room mm-hmm. for it to be something. Yeah. And it's like the right mentality. So so the, and I'm not a music producer, but this producer, he's he or she is kind of like a step in the right direction, kind of mm-hmm. like understands yeah. that mentality of leaving room for <clears throat> others. <clears throat> yep. Because there's opportunities there still, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. There's some there's some things that you can still be creative with. It's not mm-hmm. a final master track where you're yeah. know, waiting for a top line or whatever. It's kind of like a rough, yeah. in my opinion, and it can lead to something. What I've learned on this podcast of us doing this segment is you never want to be in the middle. Mm-hmm. You either want to make something that you really know you can make a good song with mm-hmm. and commit to that, or you want to make something so fucking crazy. Disrespectful, disrespectful ignorant. Disrespectful, fuck the vocalist. Ah! We're going to Coachella. Whatever yeah, it is, beat yeah. battle. Beat battle, yeah. You better give me that. And they're two completely different things. If yeah. you're swimming in the middle, 
you're fucked. It's weird. That's a weird place Because to be. you're not going to be able to make a good song, and yeah. you're not going to, this is not going to work at Coachella. Mm -hmm. If you're going to do Coachella, if you're going to, like what you said, right. the B battle shit, right. you better give me those motherfucking air horns. Give me those fucking triplets. Yes. Give me those change ups. Like when, when Ponzu, remember when Ponzu, Ponzu killed it? And he, oh, it was like we thought you were in a festival. <clears throat> well, I, I said it was the hardest. I think we all said it was like the hardest yeah. battle, like festival track. Ever on Black yeah, Chat, Ponzu. Shout out to Ponzu. Shout out to Ponzu. Music. He fucking, fucking smashed it, destroyed. But that. you, you, you agree, right? Like, 100%. if you're gonna take it there, commit, commit, to one. Mm -hmm. commit. You know? Yeah, oh yeah. Crazy. Our last submission for today is by Christian Bordy. Here we go. Let's go, Christian. Okay, some feel good shit. Yeah. Old school. Licensing. Mm -hmm. Car commercial. Yeah. Well. I don't love that loop. I don't love it either. I hope it ends here. I'm moving a little more than the other two. Yeah. yeah. It's like that boom bap. Yeah. yeah. This is the sweet spot right here. This. Right here, yeah. You this could write right some cool shit to you this. Could, you could literally just four bar loop that. Yeah, just four bar Play loop that. Play that at a roller skating party. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Speaking of roller skating party next week, August 23rd in New York City. Oh, Roller plug it, party. plug it, plug it. Yeah, so uh, that's a crap, by the way. Oh. Um, <laughs> before, wait, I, before I get into wait, it. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, that's a, that's a... I had a lot of potential. It had potential. As we like to say. It had potential. Um, I, I feel like the meat and potatoes was that little, like, yeah. four-bar loop part we all liked. If he would have just kept that, I probably would have blapped it, honestly. Yeah. I was just really into that. So arrangement was the thing on that. Arrangement. I didn't like the, the that sample when the singing came in. Yeah. Um, I thought it, if, if he was going to do it, maybe do it for one bar, mm -hmm. maybe on, like, the third or fourth bar uh, mm -hmm. before the one comes in. Um, but that's it. Um, but I'm going to crap I'm gonna crap that. Yeah. I'm going to crap it, too. Wasn't the worst though. If if you would have changed it, like what Atlas said, yeah, that might have been Something. a blap. Yeah. yeah, it might have been a blap. Mm -hmm. But for, for for now, crap. Yeah. Promise, I'm not trying to be different, but I'm gonna blap it only because. <laughs> Do it. No, no it's gotta be different. You know, I grew up in an era of like the the '90s hip hop. Boom bap. I was getting mm -hmm. that 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 vibe, you know, mm -hmm. and you know, it made me move a little bit more than the other two tracks. Yeah, you there's know, movement. like there's mm -hmm. something about that. BPM that mm -hmm. kind of like mm, and then you know you can play that at at a venue or whatever and I can I can vibe to that yep. a little bit with a drink in my hand yeah, yeah just like exactly. listening to it in in that it's setting a party vibe mm -hmm. not sure about a hit record mm -hmm. but you know I can vibe to that one it was a good vibe. vibe it was a good vibe um, Atlas Yo. why don't you um, plug the plug yes the, uh, yes yes event. yes so speaking of party vibe um, so real quick I got a few things coming up in the next couple of weeks um actually tonight so this airs tomorrow but tonight I'm doing a show face showcase if you're a producer artist uh, and you want to come perform uh, also next week Friday August 23rd I'm doing the Rolo Disco Party here in New York City uh, I'm going nice. to be back with that it's been a lot of fun 80% women guys I'm telling you it's awesome uh, also August 29th Father Dude is headlining Baby's Alright it's his first headlining show uh, at Baby's Alright in Brooklyn nice. Se September 5th I'm doing another Rolo Party and uh, September 19th, my birthday, I'm doing the birthday bash here in New York. So oh, just yeah. out for that. If you want details on any of those, just follow me, Atlas the Plug, on all social media, and it'll be in my bio. Amazing. Also, too, guys, um, you already know, past the Aux past is the happening. Aux. Past yeah. the Aux is happening. I don't want to shout these dates out. Just know that we're announcing some new dates for November, which we're super excited about. Fire. So we're going to announce that uh, in the next few days. But if you're a music producer... You need to take a look at Pastel Ox and come through, pull up on me. I want to meet you. You need to meet your peers. You get mm -hmm. in the studio. It's an amazing time. If you want to know more about it, just go to my website, illmindproducer.com. 
hit up that pass the ox link see if i'm coming to your city and pull up to pass the ox and if you're a music producer you gotta join the ill my platinum club mm -hmm. telling you um Man, I'm so excited to roll this out. I'm so excited to engage with you guys. I really um, want you guys to, you know, meet your peers and be part of this community. It, it's really, it's super empowering and really, really fun to watch. So, um, you know, check that out, illmindproducer.com. You guys already know. Mm -hmm. um, Les, yo, know, thank yeah. you for... Thank you for coming. Yo, man, thank you. This is one of the... We I, needed I, this. Yeah, I think this was one of the most insightful... Uh, podcast we've done in a subject that's probably the most important mm -hmm. that we literally never touch on. Yeah, man. Thanks for the invite. I mean, it's a pleasure. Alex, it's really fun. <clears throat> Always less. Appreciate Yo, you, brother. I can come anytime, man. This is, anytime. This is a blast. And and you might see my brother less at a past off. Oh, yeah. I'm just saying. Absolutely. Some you of know you what? have met him. Or at the, the roller LA party. One. He might come or to the, the roller, roller party. party. Yeah, you might exactly. see Omine at the roller party. Exactly. You never know. I pop up sometimes. That's right. You know, there's been you know some previous events. You know, I just show up. But yeah, past the ox. New is York. definitely where it's at. Mm -hmm. I, I think I'm going to commit to those those yeah. two in New York City, yeah. man. Mm -hmm. You might as well come to the Toronto mm -hmm. one. Or the I Montreal well. one is going to be lit. I'm just saying. <laughs> Montreal, you might know right. why. I'm going to be at the New York one, too, so y'all definitely have, have to pull to up for that. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Um, so, Les, thank you again, man. Like, oh, shout out your Instagram, uh, yeah, social media. If you want them to, to hit you up. Yeah, you man. Know. Right now, it's uh, Lestagram7. Mm-hmm. You know, that's like my go-to. Okay. I'm still still thinking about, and, and we didn't touch on this. Like, I was, I was, it's a private account. I'm thinking of opening up like a, a public a, a account, public one. Yeah, okay. still thinking about that. Yeah, okay. but we'll start with this Lestagram seven. And again, and like for the audience, I mean, you know, th this is literally, you know, a pleasure speaking with you guys. And if you guys want to DM me, hit me up. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll talk. We'll we'll get more in depth of like anything from a financial perspective or a music perspective or just like a life perspective. You mm -hmm. know, yeah. like just. Don't be afraid to hit me up because, you know, I, I just want to leave with this is like, you know, we're all learning. And that's the yeah. key component yep. is make sure that we're still continuing to grow, continue to learn and execute. This is literally the first time I've ever spoken on a podcast before. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be some learning lessons from this, mm -hmm. uh, you know, scenario. So it was a great exp uh, experience and it was a pleasure. And, yeah. and uh, that's L-E-S. You said less the gram seven. L E S L E S T A G R A M seven. Lestagram seven. Oh, Lesta T A Gram seven. Lestagram seven. Give me up. And this is episode one hundred seven. Oh. Know, so. and, and my birthday is January seven. Oh. We didn't do that on purpose. Accident. Complete accident. And it's seven o'clock. Oh. And my anniversary is October seven. <laughs> you can keep going. That's All right, that's it. That's my new And lazy. there's seven pictures on the wall. Like I said. That's my. So shout out uh, to all you guys. Yes. Blab chat, you already know, episode 107. Yes, we'll see you guys next week, next, next show. We out. Peace.